with this project another way. Another way, Denise Shifshuk. <coughs> We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Mr. Chairman, fellow Toastmasters and guests, these were the words of one of the most prominent British people of the 20th century, Winston Churchill. And the time when he delivered was his speech was not the best time for the United Kingdom. Some 30, 40 years ago, some 30, 40 years ago, the country was the prominent power in the world, ruling the seas and the oceans. It was like a big whale swimming confidently through its domain. At the moment of the speech, which was June 1940. It was not, not like a big whale. It was more like a small fox, or perhaps even a wild cat in the forest, where a young, strong, mad wolf appeared. The wolf wanted to conquer all the forest. And it, and it turned attention to the wild cat, deeming it its possible next prey. The time was difficult for the country. Yet Winston Churchill stood up and said, we shall never surrender. I don't know about you, but when I see people reacting in such a way to adversity, I am deeply inspired. I feel deep respect to them. And for a long time, I thought that that was the best, if not the only way, to deal with adversity. But I had experiences, life experiences, which made me think that perhaps there was an alternative. Let me tell you a personal story of mine. Some 12 years ago, I started my karate studying. And the training session I want to tell you about was the first training session where I learned what body strengthening exercises were about. Our trainer asked us to pair with someone and stand in front of the person. The person was supposed to punch you twice in the stomach. Of course, as a well-mannered gentleman, you had to return <laughs> the pleasure immediately. <laughs> the first time I was punched by my partner, I took, what kind of exercise is that? <laughs> I punched him once and tried to do my best to make as much time as possible before my second punch. I punched him the second time Immediately he returned me the favor. <laughs> I felt terrible and was very hesitant about continuing the exercise. Our trainer, and he's a big guy, saw me hesitating. He came to me and said, Dennis, <laughs> microphone is on. Dennis, punch him as fast as possible. You have to deliver as many punches as possible. But I will tell you a secret. When he punches you, scream. When you punch him back, scream as well, it helps. I said, well, all right. I assumed my position. My partner punched me twice. I screamed, Pah! It felt even worse than without screaming. I punched him in the return. Didn't help at all. Felt stupid. Well, on top of that, my arms started drawing together automatically to protect my stomach. My trainer said, screamed, pull your arms apart, let him punch you. <laughs> I felt like I was slowly sliding down the slippery slope of my not very good mental state, closer to panic and hysteria. I thought to myself, I'm not screaming anymore, it doesn't work for me. Instead, every time I was punched, I thought to myself, Dennis, just two more punches. If it's too difficult, we will give up. I took two punches. I took two more punches. I took another two punches. And somehow I managed to complete the exercise. 
that evening I learned two things, uh, discovered two things about myself. The first thing was something I initially thought was bleeding from my navel when I was changing clothes. Well, it turned out just to be an ugly bloody bruise, nothing terrible. The second thing was that I didn't have to plant my feet and said, I'm not giving up, bring it on. Instead, it helped me to speak quietly to myself and say, well, just another small step, another small step. I read in a book by a psychologist, Eric Byrne, about an interesting model of human psyche, which consisted of three parts, the parent part, the grown-up part, and your inner child part. And when you're emotional, you deal with your inner child. The next time, when you face, an adverse, when you face an adversity, you have two options. You can come down and say, we can do it, we shall never surrender. It's about me, us, and him. And he goes down, not us. If it works for you, fine. But if you find your inner child flinching in terror, consider taking him or her gently by his hand and tell him, let's do one small step together. Mr. Chairman, 